Hi, I'm John Velasquez, and you're watching OTV Television Network. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. We've had a busy weekend. Number of big races in the three-year-old division as well as several other great racing, exciting racing action around the country. We are going to begin in South Florida, Gulfstream Park. They had a pair of stakes races over the weekend. We're going to go back first to Saturday in the Shirley Jones Breeders' Cup, a grade two, $200,000 sprint for older fillies and mares. Let's head to Gulfstream in the running of the Shirley Jones. They're up. John's place and give me more break best. Injustice moves through at the rail. Splendid blended is close up. So is Toll Taker and so much more. Pool Land moves by beautiful bets. Then comes in the gold and the early trailer is Menifique. They run up the back stretch and grade one stakes winner Splendid Blended is alongside Injustice. These two are matching strides and they're a length and three quarters in front of Give Me More. Pool Land moves through at the rail. She's three lengths off the lead. So much more is next. Grade one stakes winner in the gold has five lengths to make up. Outside of her are both John's Place and Toll Taker, who's on the move. Beautiful Bets is at the rail. Menifique is the trailer. Six lengths from first to last as they round the far turn. Injustice and Splendid Blended continue to match strides. Injustice half ahead in front. Splendid Blended is second by a length and a quarter. Toll Taker runs a big one, three deep. Then comes so much more. Give me more and Beautiful Bets are next. Then comes John's Place, six off the lead. In the gold's gotta go. She's seven from the front, Pool Land and Menifique at the back of the pack. Splendid Blended comes calling for the lead. Work to do in the final for long of the Shirley Jones, but Splendid Blended strides away two lengths. Then comes Beautiful Bets, give me more, so much more, and Colt Toll Taker, and Splendid Blended is clear. Splendid Blended, Beautiful Bets up into second, then give me more, Splendid Blended wins. Splendid Blended won by better than three. Beautiful Bets was second, close for third between give me more and injustice. Splendid Blended, back to very good form. This is a multiple grade one winner. She won the Hollywood Starlet at two and the Vanity against her elders last year at three. Back off the long layoff last time in the Hurricane Birdie. A disappointing performance, finishing sixth that day. Now rebounding with a much improved effort, showing good alert, early speed, and winning off by three and a quarter lengths over beautiful bets at 11 and a half to one. Injustice, the early pace setter held on for third. The winner, Splendid B Blended, is a chestnut four-year-old daughter of Unbridled Song from Valid Blend by Valid Appeal. Bred in Florida by Peter Vegso and owned by the breeder, trained by Bill Mott and ridden to victory by Manny Cruz, Splendid Blended covers the seven furlongs at Gulfstream in 121 and 3. We're going to head back to Gulfstream now for Sunday Stakes feature, the Here Comes the Bride, a grade $300,000 event for three-year-old fillies on the grass. Let's head down to Florida and Here Comes the Bride. They're up. Aunt Henny broke running and goes for the front. Lake Alice is asked for speed, and now Aunt Henny's going to take back and let Lake Alice set the pace. Miss Shop is away in third, then Diamond Spirit, and the early trailer is Musical Charm. It is Lake Alice into the clubhouse turn, three quarters of a length in front of Aunt Henny, who wants to go up and challenge. She's tucked in at the rail in second, Miss Shop just outside of her third. Musical Charm is at the rail in fourth, and she's about three from the lead, and Diamond Spirit's at the back of the pack as they head to the back stretch and the 21st. Here comes the bride stakes and Aunt Henny is still headstrong. She wants to go after Lake Alice and it's Lake Alice into the backstretch three quarters of a length. Aunt Henny's about to get her way and run alongside and here comes Aunt Henny now within a neck of the front. Miss Shop will track those two. She's third and a length and three quarters from the lead. Musical Charm and Diamond Spirit at the back of the pack. Four lengths from first to last a half mile left to run. Lake Alice and Aunt Henny still won two. Lake Alice still a neck in front. Aunt Henny is second. Now Aunt Henny's going to have to go because Miss Shop is going to run up outside of her. The three of them about to line up. 
Lake Alice ahead in front, and Henny does go. Miss shots three quarters of a length off the lead. Then Musical Charm at the rail. Diamond Spirit is still fifth and last. Any one of the five can do it, and Henny takes over the lead at the quarter pole. Lake Alice is back to second. Miss shots got to go. She's a length and a half from the front, joined by her stable mate. Diamond Spirit, and they run to the top of the lane, and here's Diamond Spirit after Aunt Henny. It looks like it's down to these two, and Aunt Henny leads by a length and three quarters. Diamond Spirit, the only one with a chance to gun her down, and now she's only a length from the front. Aunt Henny sprints to the wire. Diamond Spirit, three quarters back. Aunt Henny, Diamond Spirit, Aunt Henny wins. The 21st, here comes the bride. Stakes goes to Aunt Henny by a half length. Diamond Spirit, second. Miss Shop, third. Musical Charm, fourth. Aunt Henny, winner a couple of races back at a maiden the first time she was put onto the turf in a big improvement that day. Came back last time to finish well, to finish second in an allowance race. Here moving into Stakes Company, unfortunately a race that was marred by a pair of scratches, leaving us with a relatively short field of five. But Aunt Henny, as the favorite, a little rank in the early going. Relaxing, settling down nicely for Javier Castellano later on and picking up a half-length victory over Diamond Spirit, who rallied well from off the pace, Miss Shop completing the order of the top three. The winner on Henny is a chestnut three-year-old daughter of Hennessy from Ms. Patty B by Gray Dawn. Bred in Kentucky by Patricia Elia and Christopher Elia and owned by the Erdenheim Farm, trained by Michael Matz and ridden to victory by Javier Castellano. Aunt Henny covers the mile and an eighth on the firm Gulfstream turf in 146 and four. We're going to stay in Florida. We're going to head across the state now for Tampa Bay's Saturday card. This is the biggest day of the year at Tampa Bay Downs. This, of course, Tampa Bay Downs Derby Day. We're going to kick things off at Tampa Bay with the running of the Florida Oaks for three-year-old fillies. They're going a mile and a sixteenth. Let's head down to Florida and the Oaks. And they're off. Away and running in perfect order. Bushfire breaks for the lead, and there goes Taylor Madison moving up on the outside. Stolen Prayer is toward the rail. AJ's Cold Bed comes away running fourth. The favorite Crystal Current is up on the outside with the top flight fifth. Now dropping over between horses to save ground. And the last horse away, Love Boot. Around the clubhouse turn they go. Bush Fire Rank on the lead has the lead by a next stolen prayer toward the rail, second and length and a half. Taylor Madison racing along third, then it's a length and a half farther back to Crystal Current toward the rail fourth. AJ's Cold Bed is alongside her fifth. Then it's five lengths farther back to Saratoga Drive. Now six, Summit Queen is seventh. A gap of two to San Greta eighth, and still nothing from Love Boot. To the far turn they go. Bush Fire and John Velasquez have the lead by a neck. Stolen Prayer toward the rail, racing along second. Two lengths farther back, Taylor Madison. Shadows, Crystal Current, third and fourth. Five lengths farther back. Saratoga Drive is now on the move. AJ's Cold Bed has had enough and she's stopping badly. Five sixteenths of a mile to run. Bushfire has the lead. Stolen Prayer moves through toward the rail. Second, Taylor Madison on the outside. Third, Crystal Current is now being set down for the drive for it. San Greta on the outside. Fifth, but meanwhile up front, they still have to run down. Bushfire, she's trying to take them start to finish. Stolen Prayer is now second. Crystal Current is now out after the leader's third. And far outside, Saratoga Drive. A hundred yards to come in the Florida Oaks. It's Bushfire, and on the outside, Saratoga Drive, closing with every stride. Bushfire, perfectly rated on the front end by Velasquez, will take it three parts of a length. Saratoga Drive, second. Crystal Current flattens out badly to be third, and running time on the board, 146 and one. Bushfire rebounding after a poor performance last time, really the only poor performance of her career. She rebounded nicely at generous odds, almost six to one after being a little bit aggressive early. John Velasquez got her to settle into a nice smooth stride. She won off by three quarters from Saratoga Drive. Favorite in the field was Crystal Current off a of victory last time out. She came up a little bit flat, uh, running third, not a bad effort, but certainly not uh, anywhere near the assertive move that she made in her most recent performance. The winner, Bushfire, is under consideration for the Grade 1 Ashland at Keeneland or the Grade 2 Fantasy at Oaklawn Park as the next possible start. Bushfire is a three-year-old bay daughter of Louis Couture's from Trocky Trocky by Mo Power. Bred in Florida by Moreau Bloodstock International and Mandolin Hill Farm. Owned by Ron and Ricky Rashinsky and trained by Eddie Keneally. Ridden to victory by John Velasquez, Bushfire covers the mile in a 16th at Tampa Bay in 146 and 1. 
Next up from Tampa, the Gray 3 Hillsboro. Older fillies and mares going mile and an eighth on the turf course. Let's head down to Tampa and the running of the Hillsboro. And they're off. Away and running in perfect order. Commercialized from the far outside with Bond Deal, Amarama. Comes away with a top flight. March on in. Up on the outside, there goes Jacaranda Jane quickly moving up. And now trying to cross over the last horse away, Joyful Chaos. Under the wire for the first time, Jacaranda Jane gets over nicely and has the lead by a length. Reddy's Gal now moves up to be second. Down along the inner rail, March on in is now third. Bond Deal is up on the outside fourth. Black Rock Road is from between horses fifth. Natalie Beach now racing along sixth. Back to the inside, Minge Cove is now seventh. Commercialized up on the outside. Then we go back to Laura Fina, La Dos Vida, and the trader is Joyful Chaos. A compact field of 12 as they settle for their journey up the backstretch. Jacaranda Jane slows her down on the front end, the leader a half a length. Reddy's Gal stocks the pace at her second. Bon Deal, the Santa Need Invader from the outside, third ahead. March on in is there toward the rail now, racing along fourth. Amarama inching up a closer fifth. She'll need racing room toward the rail. To the outside of her is the Great Mirror, commercialized now sixth. Men's Cove now racing along seven, three for lungs to run, and now the pace quickens. Jack Randa Jane has the lead. Reddy's gal is up on the outside. Second, Bond Deal is third. March on in is all covered up and nowhere to go. Fourth, Amaram is there. Fifth, absolutely wide open as they turn into the stretch. Here comes Reddy's gal on the outside. Jack Randa Jane is along the rail. Far outside is March on in, and Amarana with a for longer run. Reddy's gal and John Velasquez strike to the lead. That's Reddy's gal. Velasquez makes it two in a row. Three horse photo for second. Amarama might have got up. 150 and two, the running time. Reddy's gal, we, uh, we saw her last year moving on to the turf quite successfully here at Saratoga, where she won a grade three. She did tail off a little bit after that, was given some time, and returns with a very nice performance, close to the pace every step of the way, and winning at a $14.60 mutual under John Velasquez. From Amarama, the two-to-one favorite, it was boxed in, a little bit of traffic trouble for Amarama. Mike Smith got her clear, but she did fall short. March on in. A filly who has really improved very nicely over the course of the last few months. Allowed to go off at 24 and a half to one and ended up settling for the third spot under Jeremy Rose. The winner, Reddy's Gal, is a chestnut four-year-old daughter of More Than Reddy from Exquisite Mistress by Nasty and Bold. Bred in Kentucky by Alex Rankin and Lewis Wright and owned by James Catorcio. Trained by Todd Pletcher, ridden to victory by John Velasquez. Reddy's Gal covers the mile and an eighth on the Tampa Bay turf in 150 and two. Next up, the $250,000 Grade 3 Tampa Bay Derby. Three-year-olds going a mile and a 16th looking for a berth on the Triple Crown Trail. Let's head down to Tampa and the running of the Derby. They're at the post for the 26th edition of the Tampa Bay Derby. And they're off. All away and running in good order. Winnie's Tiger 2 breaks for the lead. Bluegrass Cat breaks cleanly. Up on the outside, Deputy Glitters toward the rail is El Lobo. And the last turse away is Ice and Lemon. To the clubhouse turn they go. Long shot, Winnie's Tiger 2 moves up and now has the lead. Three parts of a length, Deputy Glitters. On the outside now, second. El Lobo is third. Bluegrass Cat gets to the outside with clear racing room now fourth. Then it's a gap of two. Little Cliff. Shadow Storm Treasure. Two and a half links farther back to Irish Majesty. Then we go back to Reaffirmed and Ice and Lemon drops back to trail the field of nine three-year-olds as they settle for their journey up the backstretch. Winnie's Tiger 2 and Joe Rocco have the lead. Deputy Glitters on the outside is second. Bluegrass Cat moving to the leaders in hand. Third L. Lobo is toward the rail for it. From the outside, Little Cliff now inching up a closer fifth. Storm Treasure is now losing ground sixth as they leave the half-mile marker and swing around the far turn. Winnie's Tiger has the lead. Deputy's Glitter moves up now second. And there goes Bluegrass Cat on the outside, racing along third. Four lengths farther back. Little Cliff is now being set down for the drive with a quarter of a mile to run. Winnie's Tiger to the leader. Deputy Glitter's on the outside. Bluegrass Cat is under the whip but appears to be struggling as 
Jose Turnbaum, Jose Lascano sends Deputy Gooders to the lead. Bluegrass Cat is second, and down the center of the track, here comes Little Cliff. In deep stretch, Deputy Gooders, Bluegrass Cat on the outside, down to the wire. Deputy Gooders and Jose Lascano turn the tables from the Sam Davis and will take the derby on the wire by two. Bluegrass Cat second, Winnie's Tiger two. Tires to be third, running time on the board, 144 and one. Deputy Glitters in a bit of an upset here, pulling the turning the tables on Bluegrass Cat. They had finished in the reverse order in the prep for this, the Sam F. Davis, and this certainly did appear to be Bluegrass Cat's race to lose. Perhaps a little bit of a regression effort off of his very impressive return, but Deputy Glitters getting to the front uh, about the top of the stretch after sitting just off the pace setter Winnie's Tigger 2 and uh, was long gone top of the stretch he did appear to be about to open up in a big way he finished off about two lengths in front of Bluegrass Cat with Winnie's Tigger 2 holding on at 66 to 1 to finish in the third spot the winning the winner Deputy Glitters did break his maiden for a $65,000 tag up here at Saratoga in his career debut. And despite the fact that he has been a bit of a speed bump, his sire line at least would indicate that he should run a little bit longer. Deputy Glitters is a son of Deputy Commander. Out of Glitters by Glitterman, bred in Kentucky by Joseph Lacombe Stable and owned by the breeder, trained by Tom Albertrani and ridden to victory by Jose Lascano, of course, Tampa Bay's leading rider. Deputy Glitters does uh, look like he might be on the Triple Crown Trail for real now with a win in the Tampa Bay Derby in 144 and 1. One more event from Tampa for you on Saturday, the Turf Dash, $50,000. Older horse is going five on the lawn. Let's head back down to Tampa and the Dash. They're at the post for the Turf Dash. And they're off. Away and running in good order, and there she goes when the dove flies. Breaks alertly and right to the early lead. Western Kind now moves up to challenge down along the inner rail, is around the cape. And the last turf away, Rudy, Rudy. To the far turn they go. When the dove flies, has the lead, Western Kind. Attacks toward the rail, now second. Up on the outside, Bucky's Prayer now racing along third. Atticus Christie circling horses and on the move, now fourth. A length farther back around the Cape, skims the rail, fifth. Detour Express is sixth. A length and a half farther back to Summer Service, now seventh. And a quarter of a mile to run. When the dove flies on the outside, has the lead, Atticus Christie. Angles to the outside and runs at the leader, second. When Western Kind is there toward the rail third, and Summer Service coming on fourth with a furlong still to run. On the outside, when the dove flies, and Western Kind is digging in gamely. When the dove flies, Western Kind, Western Kind will score at seven to one. When the dove flies, defeated, and around the Cape is up to complete the 12th race trifecta. Western Kind, who really has improved nicely since moving on to the turf a few races back, picks up the victory over the local uh, leading turf sprinter when the Dove flies, was the two to one choice around the Cape, who has run some pretty nice races against some pretty good horses, moving on to the turf and settling for third. The winner, Western Kind, is a dark bay or brown gelded son of West Acre from She's a Good Dancer by Marshua's Dancer. Bred in Florida by Gary M. Pickell and G. C. Wheeler Jr., owned by Grace Harris and trained by Dwayne Glenn. Ridden to victory by Juan Umana, Western Kind covers the five furlongs on that firm Tampa Bay turf in 56 and 2. We're going to leave Florida after this next commercial break. We've got a couple of more great races for you on that three-year-old Triple Crown Trail as well. We're going to take a look at stakes racing action from Laurel, Oak Lawn Park, and Turfway on the return. Please stay with us.
Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now at Laurel, where on Saturday they ran the Harrison E. Johnson Memorial for Older Horses. We're going a route of ground. Let's head down to Laurel and the Johnson. And they're off. Water Cannon sent out to the front. Speed Wiz is right there, followed by Your Bluffing and Reckless Ways. The inside, Serious Lightning is second to last. Now Serious Lightning drops out to trail as Jenkins Jones is on the outside of that one. So into the first turn, and it's Water Cannon moving along with a three-length advantage from Speed Wiz. Reckless Ways at the fence in third. Your Bluffing is in fourth, and about six lengths from the solo front runner now. Jenkins Jones and Serious Lightning is last of all. Water Cannon making the pace by two and a half from Speed Wiz is second. Reckless Ways is third and tugging to the inside third. Here's the favorite. You're bluffing fourth and rating about five lengths from the front runner as they move up the back stretch. It's an easy pace for Water Cannon. Second last is Jenkins Jones under a ride and Serious Lightning is that trailer. Water Cannon, not much challenge there as second position is Speed Wiz. Speed Wiz just putting that mild pressure on. Reckless Ways is tracking inside in third. Another three lengths and you're bluffing. The race favorite is fourth. Still five lengths to close in. Jenkins Jones and Serious Lightning. Water Cannon, three quarters of a length from Speed Wiz and Reckless Ways. Now your bluffing's asked for run from Caramano. Still got five lengths to close in, but Speed Wiz gets away. Speed Wiz from Water Cannon, Reckless Ways. Your bluffing levels off there from fourth position, but Reckless Ways is going to get the first run at Speed Wiz. Speed Wiz from Reckless Ways. In the outside, there's your bluffing in third. And the top of the stretch, a quarter of a mile left to go. Speed Wiz, the leader. Reckless Ways to the outside is your bluffing from the back of the pack. Serious Lightning has moved into fourth. They're into the stretch here, and it's Reckless Ways. The outside, your bluffing, ridden with confidence. Your bluffing coming to Reckless Ways and rolling right on by to put a head in front. Reckless Ways is battling on the inside. Your bluffing with a 16th to go, but Reckless Ways and Rosie's roaring back on the inside. They may have brushed there in the final yards. Reckless Ways wouldn't be denied. Turn back the Laurel King. Your bluffing in the stretch. Third with Speed Wiz and Serious Lightning. Reckless Ways picking up the victory over your bluffing, a major horse for course down at Laurel in a bit of an upset. Uh, not many horses have ever managed to beat your bluffing at his favorite racetrack, but a nice performance under Rosie Napravnik getting the victory over your bluffing with Speed Whiz pressing the pace in the early going. It's 18 to 1 and settling for third. Reckless Ways, a gray or roan gelding, a son of Level Sands from Runaway Doll by Runaway Groom, was bred in Kentucky by Jack Jones and is owned by Lacey Gaudet. Trained by Edmund Gaudet and ridden to victory by Rosie Napravnik, Reckless Ways covers the nine furlongs at Laurel in 150 and three. We're going to head to Oak Lawn Park now for a pair of stakes over the weekend, beginning with the grade three Rebel, $250,000, I'm sorry, $300,000 for the three-year-olds. Going a distance of a mile and a 16th, let's head down to Oaklawn and the Rebel. Terrific race. And they're off in the Rebel. Music School bounced quickly out there to battle for the lead. Down along the inside, though, that is Kip DeVell and Traveling Leroy. Roy Aranz at the rail in fourth. Private Bow is right outside of him. It's another length back then to Knob Hill Delight, followed by Well Said. To the middle of the track is Steppenwolfer, along with. Red Raymond, and at the back of the pack is Film Fortune. They get the opening quarter in 23 and 3. Traveling Leroy rushes out there to take command. To his outside, that is Kip DeVell in second. Music School is alongside a private vow, third and fourth. Lawyer Ron coming from off the pace today is four lengths back in fifth. Well set inside of him, sixth. Knob Hill Delight is seventh, followed by Film Fortune, Steppenwolfer, and Red Raymond as they continue down the back stretch. They get the half mile in 47 and 3 fifth seconds and head for the turn. Music School alongside of Traveling Leroy and Kip DeVell. Middle of the track, it's Lawyer Ron. Private bow right there. Well said, looking for room at the rail. Then Film Fortune is on the move. Is outside Knob Hill Delight. On the final turn, Music School has the lead. Along the inside, Traveling Leroy. Middle of the track, it is Lawyer Ron. Private bow is still right there with the leaders. They get past three quarters, 112 and 4. And here they come into the stretch of the Rebel. It is Lawyer Ron who has taken command. Along the inside, Music School is still there. Private Bow trying to come on and Steppenwolfer with a late run. Lawyer Ron has got the lead. Steppenwolfer is second. To the outside, Red Raymond coming on. Private Bow's all through. It's Lawyer Ron opening up three lengths with a 16th to go. 
This year's Rebel is going to lawyer run. He's going to win it by three and a half. Close for second. Give it to Red Raymond over Stephen Wolfer. As well said, got up to be fourth. Terrific race for lawyer Ron. I was really not crazy about his chances going into this field. I thought Steppenwolfer would have a much better chance of catching him in this event, but uh, he put forth a very nice effort relaxing early under John McKee and making a nice bid, delivering a three-length victory over Red Raymond, who was back off of a layoff. This is an interesting horse who had run quite well against good rivals in the Midwest last year. Steppenwolfer settling for third, made a nice move across uh, uh, behind horses up into contention on the far turn did end up being forced a little bit wide and just got out finished for that second spot I wouldn't be surprised to see Stephen Wolfer, Wolfer take yet another step forward very disappointing in the field was Private Vow who was the two to one second choice he was rated rather assertively by Sean Bridgemahan in the early going but really had nothing to offer once they turned for home I know I was a little bit disappointed I was expecting more from this horse who was a major horse in the two-year-old division last year. Uh, not sure what Steve Asmussen is going to do with him coming out of this race. If he is going to stay on the path for the, uh, the Derby, he was expected to have only two starts leading up to the Kentucky Derby. This was his first start back, and I cannot imagine that they are, uh, they are really thrilled with his return performance. The winner, however, very impressive in victory. Lawyer Ron, a three-year-old chestnut colt by Langfear from donation by Lord Avey, was bred in Kentucky by James T. Hines, Jr. He is owned by the estate of James T. Hines, who James uh, T. Hines unfortunately passed away only a few weeks ago after having this uh, very impressive horse win down at uh, Louisiana Downs at the beginning of this season. Lawyer Ron is trained by Bob Holthus, ridden to victory by his regular rider, John McKee. Lawyer Ron covers the mile in the 16th at Oaklawn in 144 flat. Next up on Sunday at Oaklawn Park, they contested the Hot Springs Stakes, $50,000 for four and up going six furlongs. Let's head down to Oaklawn and the running of the Hot Springs. They're in the gate. That. And they're off. It was a good break from the outside for Rodeo's Castle. Up along the inside, Bubba Gum between horses that, Tat, stolen time right there. Level playing field is fifth. Next to Santana Strings, Joe Sixpack, and at the back of the pack, Stormy Business as they move down the back stretch. That is Bubba Gum now up to engage Stormy uh, Rodeo's Castle today. That tat running third, stolen time is fourth. Joe Sixpack has the rail in fifth. To the outside is level playing field. Santana Strings as they head onto the turn. Bubba Gum is at the rail. Rodeo's Castle to the outside. It's two lengths back. That Tad is right there. Third stolen time. Fourth level playing field. He's got his running shoes on today. He's fifth already. And here they come into the stretch of the Hot Springs. It is that Tat moving up now. But on the outside, here comes level playing field. Along the inside, Bubba Gum. And Rodeo's Castle still right there. Rodeo's Castle a slight lead. Level playing field driving up on the outside. Bubba Gum is right there. That Tat not giving way. The leader is Rodeo's Castle. That Tat's trying to come back on now. Play, level playing field the outside. It is Rodeo's Castle. That Tat level playing field. But he defends his title. That Tat, what a great race for that Tat. Comes back and wins it by a head. Level playing field second. Rodeo's Castle was third. That Tat picking up the victory here. 10 to 1 outsider winning by a neck after pressing the pace in a stalking trip every step of the way. Level playing field. Having to settle for second, making his usual bid from off the pace, it did fall short as the favorite. Rodeo's Castle, involved right from the start, did get clear at the top of the stretch, but was caught late, finishing in the third spot. The winner of that tat is a dark bay or brown gelded son of Faltat from Oh Boy Valoy by Bates Motel. Bred in Oklahoma by the Richter Family Trust and owned by Ken Murphy Thoroughbreds Limited, trained by Cole Norman and ridden to victory by M. Clifton Berry. That tat completes the six furlongs at Oaklawn in 110 and two. Going to head to Kentucky next, Turfway Park in Florence, Kentucky, ran this weekend's favorite featured Tejano run for older horses. Featuring the return to the races of Ball Four, a horse that we saw run quite nicely on the turf up here at Saratoga, but uh, has seemed to have taken very nicely to that poly track surface. Let's head down to Turfway and the Tejano run. And they're off. Arrow Bearer was off slowly for the lead. That's ball four. Down along the inside, Esprit du Roi. Then up from the outside, Azucar. Followed by Alpha Tejano. 
into the first turn and ball four has the lead now by a length up on the outside as Zucar second ahead Alpha Tejano from between horses now takes second Azucar is third Esprit du Wa runs fourth two back to Bullion in fifth Doc D moves up into sixth followed by collateral damage and ask the Lord then arrow bearer and royal gem the trailer is Plumwood First quarter in a moderate 24 seconds and ball four all alone on the lead by two. Alpha Tejano second. From the inside, Esprit du Wah now gains ground. Esprit du Wah takes second. From the outside, that's Azucar in third. Then it's a gap of a length and a half. Moving up from between horses, Doc D, followed by Ask the Lord, but midway through the turn, Ball four still with a two-length lead. Esprit du Wai is second. Then up on the outside, Bullion takes third. Ask the Lord moves up fourth. Doc D is fifth. Into the stretch, and it's all ball four with a five-length lead. Now Ask the Lord is gaining ground. He takes second. Up on the outside, Esprit du Wai, Doc D. It's still with the lead, ball four. Ask the Lord is gaining ground on ball four, but ball four holds on, leads all the way, wins it by a length. Ask the Lord second, then Doc D, followed by Esprit du Wah. Ball four returns to the races off a five-month layoff victorious. He really does like that poly track surface, and here gets the victory by three-quarters of a length on the front end from Ask the Lord, the second choice in the batting, with Doc D rallying from off the pace to finish third. The winner, Ball 4, is a bay gelded son of Grand Slam from Making Faces by Leafard. Bred in Kentucky by B.D. Gibbs Farm Limited and Grand Slam Farm, owned by Derek Smith and Michael Tabor, trained by Pat Bean Cohn, and ridden to victory by Julienne Leperu. Ball 4 covers the mile in an eighth on the poly track at Turfway in 151 and 4. We're going to head to the southwest now. Turf Paradise, the featured stake there on Saturday, the Phoenix Gold Cup. Interestingly enough, typically you think of a Gold Cup as being a root race. This, on the other hand, a sprint for older horses. Let's head down to Turf Paradise and the Gold Cup. Off and running in the Phoenix Gold Cup. Rockets start for Point Doomy. Scott's Bluff is flashing early speed and joined quickly now by Flying Supercon. Flying Supercon very fast takes the lead. Three parts of a length in front. Jungle Prince is propping him second now. Scott's Bluff came away third. Point Doomy racing in the fourth spot. Iron Halo flashing speed just two off the pace in fifth. Western act up close early as well. Just see James in mid pack is four lengths off the pace. Quartz in session. Next down along the inside followed by Moore's Bridge on the far outside. See my Halo caught in heavy traffic now followed up the inside by brand name at the back of the pack around the turn they go opening quarter mile 21 and 2 with a tailwind to the top of the stretch jungle prince taking the lead flying supercon tries to counter second courts in session now launches a rally from third far outside iron halos under some pressure fourth moore's bridge scott's bluff under pressure just see james up the inside down to the final for long jungle prince has opened up here jungle prince opens up by four a late charge from brand name up the inside, but Jungle Prince home free. Jungle Prince rolling in the Phoenix Gold Cup by five. Brand name was up for the place. Courts in session third, then just see James in 108 and one. Jungle Prince picking up the victory. A nice effort right near a quick pace every step of the way and kicking clear by five and a quarter from brand name with courts in session. Off the pace rally from mid pack to finish third. He did have a little bit of traffic trouble at the top of the stretch may have cost him a little bit, but uh, brand name three quarters of a length in front of him as they cross the finish line. The winner, Jungle Prince, is a bay gelded son of Sir Cat from Wayward Song by Seattle Song. He was bred in Kentucky by Nick Bentley and is owned by Bentley, Burke, and Ciara et al. Trained by Juan Garcia and ridden to victory by Agapito Delgadillo. Jungle Prince completes the six furlongs at Turf Paradise in 108 and 1. We are going to pause now for one more brief message, and when we return, we'll be heading out to Southern California for stakes action from Santa Anita and returning home to the Big A. Please stay with us.
Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now in Southern California. A bunch of stakes races over the weekend. We're going to go all the way back to Friday, the uh, 17th of March, obviously St. Patrick's Day, and they ran the Irish O'Brien for fillies and mares on the downhill turf course in Santa Anita. Let's head back to last Friday and the Irish O'Brien. For the Irish O'Brien. Yeah, no. Away they go. Cambia Corsa broke very smartly and goes straight to the lead. Strut your stuff is coming through second. Cyber Slew on the far side and here's Sterling Cat the Grey now running up alongside a Cambio Corsa as they fly early. Dust led Anya's back in the fifth spot and something about Laura five off the leaders. They go to the half mile pole and Cambia Corsa gets pressure from Sterling Cat. Those two lead it by a length and a half to Strut your stuff. Something about Laura's fourth. Then we come back to Cyber Slew. Dust fed on years, drop back last. Eight lengths would cover the lot. Down the hill they come now, and it's still Cambio Corsa going on comfortably on the outside. Sterling Cat losing a bit of ground at the rail, then strut your stuff. Something about Laura, five off the leaders, and another five to Cyber Slew and Dust fed on you. They're at the top of the lane in the Irish O'Brien, and still the favourite, Cambio Corsa, goes on for home, leads a length and a half. Something about Laura in the blue colours and strut your stuff down the centre, but Cambio Corsa still the one to catch. Something about Laura, the danger, these two are full wealth here. Cambio Corsa, something about Laura chasing gamely down the centre. Cambio Corsa, something about Laura going to hit it together. Cambio Corsa, Cambio Corsa, I believe, just held on. Something about Laura right there. Cyber Slew third and Dasper Anya was fourth. Cambio Corsa picking up the victory here, making uh, running her streak right right up there. This is a very nice horse on that downhill turf course. She got to the lead, fought it out just about every step of the way, did kick clear and held on by a head as the odds on choice over something about Laura down from Northern California with Cyber Slew rallying from off the pace to complete the order of the top three. The winner can be, of course, a gray or roan filly, a daughter of Avenue of Flags from Alter Fleet by a Fleet, bred in California by John Fradkin and Diane Fradkin, owned by Leatherman Racing Limited and trained by Doug O'Neill, ridden to victory by John Court. Can be, of course, that covers the six and a half furlongs on the firm downhill turf course in 112 flat. We're going to take a look next at stakes racing action from Saturday, beginning with the grade two San Felipe for three-year-olds at a mile and a sixteenth. Let's head out to California and the San Felipe. And away they go. New Jersey Jeff was off a little awkwardly. Simon Pure fast from the outside gate. Point determined from the inside gate. Racketeer in the black colors going up alongside of them and Refinery tucking in just behind the leaders. Skydiving trying to drop in from one of those outside gates is forced to go wide. AP Warrior in the green. Only three lengths off these leaders. Then back to Blazing Sunset is pretty keen to go on, climbing on horse's heels, now dropping down onto the rail. Here's Bob and John back second last. Bob and John gives them a good seven length start, and then it's four more to New Jersey Jeff. Onto the back stretch they go, and Simon Pure setting the pace. In the second spot is Racketeer. Down at the rail we have Point Determined in the white blinkers, up alongside his refinery. Blazing Sunset still keen to go on. He's pulling the boy out the irons between horses, two and a half off them. AP Warrior is going to have to go wide, but AP Warrior in the green, turning the pressure on now as they start to quicken into the far turn. And let's see, Bob and John in the white colours still going easy. And Bob and John starts to close in. He's four lengths off these leaders in skydiving. Last a long way, New Jersey Jeff. They come into the quarter pole. AP Warrior on the outside goes looking for the lead. Bob and John is going to be hooked five wide in the white colours. Refineries right there too. Racketeer in the black colours. They're at the top of the lane now. On the outside, AP Warrior. Refinery goes with him. Racketeer. Bob and John on the grandstand side coming home gamely as well. Homeward bound now and it's AP Warrior. Point Determined in the blinkers joining the fray too. Bob and John down the outside. But here comes Point Determined. And Point Determined flying through on the inside. AP Warrior. AP Warrior. Point Determined. AP Warrior keeps him at bay. AP Warrior beats Point Determined. Close for third. Racketeer or Bob and John. A little bit of an upset here is AP Warrior, who has really been a little bit of an underachiever up until this point, a very nicely bred horse, but uh, has never quite lived up to expectations, was recently transferred to the barn of John Sheriffs, who of course won last year's Kentucky Derby with Longshot Giacomo. He really turned his act around with a very impressive off-the-pace win by a half-length 
over point determined who did get blocked a little bit angled in in the drive and got up there in a pretty game effort to run a solid second bob and john the favorite at even money rallied from off the pace but could do no better than third in a little bit of a lackluster effort for that horse who a lot of people including myself have it pretty highly ranked as a kentucky derby candidate the winner ap warrior is a dark bay or brown son of ap and d from warrior queen by quiet american Bred in Kentucky by Jim Fleming and owned by Stan Fulton, trained by John Sheriffs, ridden to victory by Corey Nakatani. AP Warrior has now stamped himself a part of the Triple Crown Trail with his victory in the San Felipe in 142 and 2. We're going to head right back to California now and the running of the Pasadena Stakes for three year olds going a mile on the turf course. Let's head to California and the running of the Pasadena. And they're all set now for the Pasadena Stakes. Oh, away they go. All came out smoothly. Tent from the inside gate is quick into stride. Stratham down the center. In between those two is Plug Me In and Two Senders taken a strong hold. Two Sender now pulling his way up to second. Then back to Icy Ridge. Point of impact. Looks relaxed today. Back second last. Four and a half off these leaders and genre is last early. Into the turn they go and Tent in no hurry whatsoever out here. Has his ears pricked. He's taking them along just over a length to Two Sender. Down at the rail, Plug Me In is a joint third, up alongside is Stratham. They've been followed by Point of Impact, back third last, but only four and a half off the leaders with Icy Ridge inside of him, and at the back is Genre. Down the back stretch they go, and it's still 10. Got it all his own way, although Two Sender is pretty keen to go on from the second spot. Then we come back to Plug Me In and Stratham, a joint third. They've been followed by Icy Ridge. Point of impact is in the white blankers, now gives them five length start and then two more to genre. No change as they go into the far turn, it's still 10th the leader, two sender right there second, those two now kick on for home. Stratham is in the third spot, down at the rail, plug me in, point of impact, then I see Ridge and now genre is running on from last. At the top of the lane and 10th and two sender now, these two both let loose. Two sender on the grandstand side. Tent is tough, keeping him at bay. They neck and neck through the lane. Genre is running on from third. Past the eight pole they come. Tent on the inside and two sender a tremendous horse race. Neither one will give an inch. Two sender gets the advantage now and Tent cannot go with two sender who puts him away late. And two sender goes on to win well from Tent. Genre was third and Stratham finished fourth. Two sender, an impressive uh, horse beginning his career in Europe and here. Now, of course, in the barn for Judmont of Bobby Frankel picking up a length and a half victory as the even money favorite over Tent, another European bred. This one an Irish bred. In fact, in this field, seven horses, five overseas bred running in the five top spots. The only American breds running last and second to last in this field as genre completes the order of the top three. Disappointing in here was Point of Impact, who was uh, kind of a, a, it was a late decision by Bob Baffert to take him out of the San Felipe and try him on the turf. He did disappoint. It's worth noting, however, that his sire, Point Given, did have a turf winner on the in stakes company in Florida last weekend, which I guess would, uh, would have been the reason why they decided to try something different with him. I'm not sure what the plan is for him next. Or for the winner, Two Sender, who was very impressive in uh, in the care now obviously of bobby frankel two sender is a bay colt the son of king's best from return by saddler's wells bred in britain by judd mont farm and owned by the breeder trained by bobby frankel ridden to victory by alex solis two sender covers the mile of the pasadena in 135 and two next up right back to california and the running of the crystal water handicap cal breads running a mile on the turf let's head back to southern california in the call of the crystal water Away they go. Hockey the General broke well with Uncle Denny, Mr. Wolverine from the inside gate and Orbit's World. He's the rage. McCann's Mojave now sprinting up and McCann's Mojave going to go on to lead them. Red Warrior settling down four lengths off the leaders and then it's Super Strut going to have to go a little wide. Orbit's World's dropped back towards the rear with Little Mitch. Then comes Calkins Road and Charbonneer is last, a good 14 off the leader. They go to the three-quarter pole and Uncle Denny is setting the pace with McCann's Mojave right up alongside and he's the rage right there in third. Mr. Wolverine scrapes the paint fourth, three lengths off the leaders. Then we come back to Hockey the General right there in the red colors. Red Warrior is on the outside. Then back to Orbit's World. Up alongside of that comes Stra Super Strut. Then there's a gap of four back to Calkins Road, Little Mitch and Charbonneer is still last. 
They have a half mile to go in the crystal water and Uncle Denny and McCann's Mojave, the two leaders, been joined by He's the Rage, three in a line into the turn now. Mr. Wolverine down at the rail between horses, Hockey the General, Red Warrior on the outside. Orbit's World gets closer now, only five off the leader, up alongside of that Super Strut, then five back to Little Mitch, Calkins Road and Charbonnier last. They bunched as they come to the top of the lane. Uncle Denny's the leader. On the extreme outside, Super Strut. McCann's Mojave's in there. He's the rage. Hockey the general. Mr. Wolverine getting away through down at the rail. Wide open. Mr. Wolverine at the rail. Uncle Denny's going on with it. Super Strut down the center as well. They come past the 16th pole and Mr. Wolverine gets a narrow advantage. Uncle Denny's right there and Super Strut. Super Strut, Mr. Wolverine. Super Strut, Mr. Wolverine, Uncle Denny. And finishing fourth, Hockey the General in a blanket finish. Super Strut Tyler Bay is picking up the victory at over 8 to 1 over a long shot Mr. Wolverine who was involved uh, down inside and just lost the head bob 62 to 1. Wouldn't that have been a nice, uh, nice winner on top for somebody? Favorite in the field was Uncle Denny. Set the pace in the early going and battled pretty gamely through the lane to finish third. The winner's super strut is a dark bay or brown gelded son of Lil Tyler from Miss Shea Cheval by Torsion. Bred in California by Madeira Thoroughbreds and owned by A&R Stables Limited, Class Racing, Miller et al. Trained by Craig DeLossi and ridden to victory by Tyler Bay's super strut. Covers the mile on the Santa Anita turf course in 135 flat. Going to head home now for a pair of stakes races from Saturday at the Big A, beginning with the Grade 3 Cicada for three-year-old fillies. This race was shortened to six furlongs when they decided to extend the inner track meet. This race, as a result, uh, shortened up a furlong and uh, drew a solid but short field of three-year-old filly sprinters. Let's head down to New York in the running of the Cicada. They're racing in the Cicada. Celestial Legend had a great start. She goes straight out to lead them early. Oprah Winnie's away running in second. Then comes Wild Gams third to the inside. Followed by Vasa, Spenny, Renew on the far outside. And Swap Flipperoo, Celestial Legend. And Eric Rodriguez lead the way up the back stretch. It's Celestial Legend, a length and a half in front over Oprah Winnie and Wild Gams. The first quarter was 22 and 3 fifth seconds. Renew is fourth on the far outside, four lengths off the lead. And then between horses, Vasa, Spenny along the rail, and Swap Flipperoo. Three furlongs to go, Celestial Legend, a length in front of Oprah Winnie. Wild Gam saves all the ground, third, two and a half lengths off the lead. Swap Flipperoo swings up on the far outside. She's still six behind. Then Vasa and Spenny at the top of the stretch. Celestia Legends given a test here by Wild Gams and Oprah Winnie. Wild Gams now has gone by Celestia Legend. It's Wild Gams in front. Celestia Legend back into second. Oprah Winnie is third on the outside. Wild Gams and Abarcoa running away to victory in the Sakana. It is Wild Gams by four under the wire. Celestial Legend beaten for the first time second today. Then came Oprah Winnie in third. Wild Gams, who obviously loves this aqueduct in her track. She has really moved up nicely since getting the opportunity to run here from her connections, and she has lived up to expectations. Three and a quarter length victory over the previously undefeated Celestial Legend who did get to the front. She was a little bit aggressive early, the early fractions, a little bit on the sharp side for the three-year-old fillies. She ran on well to finish in the second spot, suffering her first career defeat. Oprah Winnie, the filly who applied a, applied a lot of that pressure after a stumbling start under Edgar Prado, got up and pressed Celestial Legend and had to settle for third. The winner, Wild Gams, is a bay three-year-old daughter, Forest Wildcat, from Diamonds and Legs by Quiet American. She was bred in New Jersey by the new farm and is owned by the breeder, trained by Ben Perkins, and ridden to victory by Ibar Coa. Wild Gams covers the six furlongs of the Cicada in 109 and 3. We're going to head right back down to New York now in the Grade 3 Gotham for three-year-olds. This race extended to a mile and a sixteenth, run on the inner track at two turns, and drew some very interesting prospects for the Triple Crown Trail. Let's head back down to New York in the running of the Gotham. They're off in the Gotham. 
And like now, goes straight out to the early lead. Eagle Head is away running in second. Keat Entry's gonna sit just off the pace as like now will lead them early. Then comes Sweet Northern Saint on the far outside, Greeley's Legacy. Achilles of Troy is down on the rail and he's racing six lengths off the lead. Then put on your dancing shoes, Sunshine Alpine wide into the turn. And then the last two runners who are he's an old salt and church service. So it's like now who sets the pace to the back stretch. He ran a quarter in 23 and one fifth seconds. Edgar Prado has keyed entry three lengths behind him in second. Then Sweet Northern Saint, who's third to the outside. Eagle Head is down at the rail, then a hard held Greeley's legacy. Achilles of Troy, mid pack here. He's six and a half lengths off the lead. Then he's been swung to the outside to make a run now up the back stretch. And following him is Sunshine Alpine. Three to put on your dancing shoes. Church service, and he's an old salt. A 47 and three half mile. Not a fast pace here in the Gotham. They're moving into the far turn, and like now is the leader. Keyed entry is a length and a half behind. Sweet Northern Saint is in third. He's two and a half lengths off the lead. Greeley's legacy saving ground. Dominguez starting to get into Achilles of Troy. He's going to have to circle the field. He's got three and a half to make up, and he's got to pick it up at the top of the stretch. Like now, going for the upset here. Turns for home a length and a half in front. Keat entry is second. Achilles of Troy's been defeated. He's back in fifth. Sweet Northern Saint is third. One furlong to run. And like now's not done yet. He's digging down for more at 36 to 1. Keat entry taking a final shot at him. Then comes Sweet Northern Saint. It's like now. And Keat entry. They're coming to the wire. And like now has won. Like now. This was not one of the prospects, apparently, according to the wagering at over 36 to 1. Got to the front end, his first time going longer than six furlongs, and uh, he's got a little bit of breeding for it, at least for middle distances. He's uh, got the pedigree to stretch out. He's got the right trainer as well in Kieran McLaughlin. In a race that appeared to be overloaded with early speed, everybody applied the brakes when they broke out of the starting gate. The only one that went on with it was Fernando Jara, and like now, was able to go through uh, 23 and 2.25 at 47.78 early fractions. Had plenty left to hold off keyed entry by a neck in a game performance with Sweet Northern Saint running just off the early lead. In fact, the top three running one, two, three every step around the racetrack. Sweet Northern Saint doing so in a position three wide in what I thought was a very impressive performance. Also quite good was Greeley's legacy, who because of that slow pace was much closer to the early pace than he normally is and ran very well to finish fourth. Obviously a very big disappointment in here was the favorite Achilles of Troy. Uh, the rumors were flying about Achilles of Troy's condition and he was in fact vanned off following this race. A uh, little bit of a disappointment for a lot of people. Ramon Dominguez uh, not real comfortable with the way the horse was galloping through the, uh, through the stretch, eased him up a little bit. He finished fifth, did complete the race. He was not eased, but a uh, little bit of an unusual circumstance there as he was vanned off following the uh, running of the Gotham. The winner, like now, I presume, will be heading on to the Wood Memorial next month after having stretched out quite successfully in this performance. Well worth noting, not unlike Deputy Glitters, who broke his maiden at Saratoga with a 65 tag in his career debut, like now, also broke his maiden on the, uh, he on the aqueduct uh, track for $75,000 tag. So a nice horse can come from any number of a diff different places, but uh, two previously undefeated Colts, Sweet Northern, or I'm sorry, uh, Sweet Northern Saint undefeated uh, on, uh, on dirt on paper. He was disqualified from one of his victories and keyed entry, of course, undefeated heading into this race, both suffering defeats here at the hands of 36 to one outsider like now. Like now is a three-year-old Bay Gelding, a son of Jules from Can't Bluff Me by Pine Bluff. He was read, bred in Florida by John Dillon and is owned by the breeder. Trained by Karen McLaughlin, ridden to victory by Fernando Jara. Like now covers the mile and a 16th on the inner track in 143 flat. That's going to wrap up a busy weekend's worth of stakes racing action. Thank you very much for joining us here on Horses and Courses. We hope you've enjoyed the program and will be able to join us again next week. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races. Thank <laughs> you.